Do you know someone who's having a birthday? Introduce a man who has been serving as uh, a living example, uh, uh, as I see it, to the book of James, a man who took hardships and tribulations and turned them into great opportunities to witness to many lives uh, in the work that he has done. Whether it be the Emmy Award winning narrative television network that serves the visually impaired, his two widely read novels, The Ultimate Gift and The Ultimate Life, or now the work that he's doing with Destiny Image Films. That man is Jim Sobel. Jim, once again, welcome to uh, Media Watch. It is great to be with you. Thank you so much. We're, 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 we're very pleased to have you here. I'm, I'm going to go ahead, Jim, and dive right on in, uh, and uh, uh, let's uh, get this show on the road. Uh, first off, uh, let me give my brother uh, uh, an opportunity to say a couple words, if you'd like to here, Bill, before we begin this exciting venture. Well, uh, good afternoon, Jim. This is Bill Collier uh, with Freedomist and also with Media Watch. Uh, good to talk to everybody out there. Uh, Mr. Stovall, it's also great to have you um, on. Um, just looking at some of your past accomplishments and your experiences, you know, you meet a lot of people that are really successful in life. And it's almost like a vanilla success, I call it. You know, they haven't had to really climb a lot of mountains. They haven't had to go through rings of fire. And you can tell in terms of the depth of person that you're dealing with that they can't take the hardships. They, they can't take the, uh, the battering that life gives them. And clearly, you've gone through a lot of that, and I think that that reflects a lot in your work. So uh, that's basically my, my biggest com comment uh, and thought about you and the work that you've done. Uh, I, I'm, you know, almost feel like there's a certain grittiness to what you do, what to you and to what you do. Okay, great. Well, you know, I, I think all of us have those struggles we face, whether it's uh, me facing the loss of my sight or other people having, you know, financial uh, challenges or marital problems or, or, or whatever the case may be. You know, we're all only as big as the smallest thing it takes to divert us from our calling, whatever that may be. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, uh, you know, certainly I've been through uh, my time of fire, and uh, and I think everybody has, you know, and and unfortunately, uh, some people go through it and don't learn the lesson and uh, uh, get to do it again. <laughs> yeah, it, there is there is an old song, uh, and it it actually said, "Take another lap around Mount Zion or Sinai till you've learned your lesson, till you stop yep. your whining, whining, and quit your <laughs> rebelling." And I've gone around that mountain too many times myself. Yeah, and and, and we all do. You know, I you know my prayer is often, Lord, uh, show me the lesson and don't uh, teach it to me. Just just show me, and hopefully I'll get it. You know. Right. So my first question I have. This is Paul speaking. I know uh, my my brother and I we are identical twins. So you may not be able to tell who's who's talking to who. We should probably say before we speak, Paul speaking, and then you can say Bill <laughs> speaking. Now that'll be cool. So our first question here is, how did you come about uh, to work with Destiny Image Films, or rather, uh, what inspired you to undertake this project uh, with this particular emerging film company? Well, it was interesting. I have done movies before. Um, uh, you know, my first two novels, uh, one is Fox made into The Ultimate Gift, and they're in the process of making the second one, The Ultimate Life, into a movie. And there are tremendous, tremendous advantages working with a huge studio. And there are huge disadvantages. And uh, one of the things you always struggle with with a huge studio is uh, keeping the message intact. You know, they, all the studios like my, my stories, they like my characters, and uh, sometimes they can kind of take or leave the message. And, uh, you know, I'm not in the TV business or book business or newspaper column business or movie business or speech business. I'm in the message business. That's what I do. All those other things are simply outgrowths of my message and what it is I'm doing. And, you know, I believe if the Apostle Paul were alive today, uh, in addition to writing, he would be probably making movies because it is the it is the communication of the realm today. So and he'd be after, blogging too and tweeting. He would. Uh, there's no question he'd be blogging, and uh, he would definitely be. Uh, the, my my uh, second question is: uh, How uh, does the stated goal of Dust and Emits Films, uh, and actually, you're, you're, I think you're kind of uh, already touching on this, to tell inspirational stories that will touch and change lives? fit into the drivers that seem to push your life steadily along? 
Well, you know, I, I think it's important when people go to a movie, they get entertained. I, I believe they're entitled to their money's worth and a great show. But I also believe uh, it's my calling to give them that message, that message of hope, redemption, salvation, forgiveness, whatever the, the, the thing is we're dealing with in any particular film. And, uh, you know, I think that is important as well. And, uh, you know, there are a lot of people, no matter how great a book I write, uh, they're not going to read it. I mean, that's an unfortunate thing. But, the, you know, the theaters and the ma the multiplexes are filled with young people that, uh, you know, they go to the multiplex. They don't even know what they're going to see till they get there. And, uh, you know, the, a lot of those people are my audience. Right. Uh, how does the uh, – actually, uh, You've done a lot of work, Jim, I see, uh, after the time in your life that you lost your sight. And may I ask you, did the loss of your sight commit you to a life of purpose? And if so, how did that define the types of projects uh, that you've chosen to take a part, part of uh, since that turning point in your life? And if not, uh, if, if you've already felt you had a great sense of purpose, uh, did it enhance that purpose or was it a struggle that you had to overcome? Great question. I had a plan for my life uh, as a as a young uh, a teenager, and uh, and then through my high school years and on into college, I, I had planned to be an All American football player and then go into the NFL, play for the beloved Dallas Cowboys, and that was the whole. Oh, thing. hold on, hold on, Jim. We just lost one there. I have a problem. I have a problem with you. Yeah. you know, I loved you up until this part. Yeah. I understand. I am a but you got to realize, I was young and impressionable, and never did it. So. Okay, well, good. Well, that's good. Dur during a routine physical to go play one year of football, I, I was diagnosed with this condition that would cause me to lose my sight. And uh, uh, I realized there, there's never been a blind guy uh, play for the Dallas Cowboys, although they look like it sometimes, but uh, they yeah. haven't. And I, I had to then change directions, and everything came out of that. And, yeah, I, I had to get a new purpose for my life. And, you know, I went from – a religious young person to someone in relationship and I had to come to a you know a clear understanding of uh, uh, of what some things meant and how they activated in my life I mean a lot of things in the scriptures are a great theory uh, and you can sit there and uh, talk about them write about them sing about them but then there comes a day when you've got to you got to make this work for real in your own life and that's where you go from Amen. religion to relationship yeah, you have to actually, uh, I call it, uh, uh, impacting uh, at the ground level. Uh, right. And, and you have to do it in an intentional way, and I'm sure that you've experienced this uh, firsthand. Yes. Uh, go ahead. You know, it, it is just there's a certain reality that comes to it that, uh, uh, oh, it, it, it's kind of like uh, – uh, the theory of being in love, and you can read about being in love, and then you wake up one day, and all of a sudden you're experiencing these feelings, and you had no idea. You kind of had a, uh, you know, kind of had a vague theory, but you really had no idea. Yes, I know exactly what you mean. Uh, actually, uh, right now you, you you speak of love, and love is actually in my walk. This is Paul speaking. In my walk, uh, I am beginning uh, to develop an understanding of of godly intentional love, for instance, mm -hmm. in 1 Corinthians 13. And looking at it in theory is one thing. As I'm trying to practice it out in my life, it is, let's just say it's incredibly challenging uh, to actually apply it to your daily life in an intentional way. Oh, it's, it's, it's brutal. I, and, and the way we love one another and then the way God loves us, I, I was reading a a quote of Mother Teresa's the other day where she said, unless we love everyone unconditionally, we don't love anyone at all. And yes. uh, that is tough. That's, that's a, we'll never, ever meet that standard, but that's no. a standard that we have to uh, constantly uh, strive for.